Last week, I mentioned what I wanted to happen, and it was almost perfect. Today, I'm talking Tennessee. I'm talking SEC. This is Tennessee Fan Talk. Balls fans, the best fans in football, rowdy, rowdy. Passionate, passionate, dedicated, dedicated. and this is where Vol Nation comes to talk. Welcome to the hottest spot for all things Tennessee Vols. This is Tennessee Fan Talk, where the orange and white comes to life with a dash of humor, a sprinkle of wit, and a whole lot of Southern charm, bringing you the latest updates, breaking news, and some good old-fashioned laughs along the way. We're the water cooler chat you wish you were having at the office, minus the boring stats. Whether you bleed orange or you're just dipping your toes into the world of Tennessee sports, this is for everybody. It's loud, it's proud, it's Tennessee Fan Talk. And now your hosts, Bird and the Duke. Now, AP number seven, Tennessee did a little better than my projection of that 52 and three, finishing off 56 nothing. They need to send a Thanksgiving card to all those losers of week 13 for giving them the playoffs back. A little about Tennessee's dominance over UTEP, followed by a lot more of week 13 results and 14 gains on this episode of Tennessee Fan Talk. If you notice in the beginning, I said I'm talking Tennessee and I'm talking SEC. If you listen to this show for the comedy, I've got some bad news for you. The Duke traveling for Thanksgiving, so you just got bird. Tennessee starting slow again this week week against Vandy cannot happen. Matter of fact, the only excitement from the first quarter during the UTEP game was the McCoy interceptions, otherwise all punts. Offensive woes just keep striking over and over and over again each and every game. Sometimes uh, a lot a lot of the season it was the first half, Georgia game it was the last half. We don't know what we got on the field. There's no offensive excitement. For this particular team, luckily the defense stepping up, but can they continue that week in and week out uh, coming forward into what we hope will be the playoff season for Tennessee? After the first, I will give them this. Again, it's with UTEP, so a little bit of salt there. After the first quarter, only three more punts the rest of the game. A big win over a sorry opponent. My problem is, as I always do, looking through the drive chart, looking for the word deep. What do they consider deep passing? Zero deep passes completed, and honestly, I don't even remember seeing one attempt for a deep pass from Tennessee. Plenty from UTEP, none from Tennessee. Now, there's not a lot needed in the game, uh, in this particular game, due to the field position that Tennessee have uh, had repeatedly uh, starting off in plus territory multiple times. But with so many games this season without those deep threats, when you look through those depth charts over and over and over again, game by game, and the deep threats are uh, attempts are just not there. How can you move forward into the playoffs with that? They will be challenging, or does Josh Heupel have an ace up the sleeve that we haven't seen? Duke would tear me up right there and say, no, we just don't have the receivers. I think we have the quarterback. The arm strength's there. He overthrows a little, maybe because he's scared, whatever it may be. Tennessee, 241 r- yards rushing, 219 passing over 68 total plays, giving up only 230 yards, but still committed 60 yards in penalties. They have to clean up their penalty yards. No reason why they should have anything like that against a UTEP team. 
I do like that the Vols were 100% in the red zone. We've had that a time or two, not like the hooker days where they were really great in the red zone. But another concern, 6-12 and 12 on third downs. That is very worrisome for future games. 6-12 and 12 on third downs, 50% against UTEP. There's a little bit of Gaston Moore and Navy Shuler and stuff that brings that down, but it's still UTEP. Tackle for loss, much better than the two they had last week, going 15 tackles for loss, 54 yards. Tennessee finishing off like we thought they would. And now, because of, and we'll go around the SEC, has set themselves up, or others have set them up, for a potential playoff run. Florida upsetting two weeks in a row since all hopes of Ole Miss down the drain. And this is the point in the show where Duke's BVS would kick in and say, they might have a chance if we lose to Bandy. <laughs> we had the picks last week. Have to send a shout out to last week's guest, Franklin, picking the Auburn win, even though he also picked Mississippi State. And we have to love, I won't go through everything last week, because you know how it played out. Every Tennessee fan is excited about how it all played out. I just It's crazy that we even took the time to mention it. This is what we would love to happen. We broke down all those things, and, um, you know, there was only one team that, that hurt us on that. We'll talk about that later. Gotta love Oklahoma and Florida for making our wins against them look better. And after the break, we'll break down this coming Rivalry Week. How do you feel when you switch to GEICO and save on your car insurance? It's like going to work on one Thursday morning and thinking to yourself, just one more day until Friday. But then somebody in the elevator says, Happy Friday! Then you check your phone quickly and discover today is actually Friday. So yes... Happy Friday, random stranger in the elevator. Happy Friday, indeed. Yep, switching and saving with Geico feels just like that. Get more with Geico. How do you feel when you switch to Geico and save on your car insurance? It's like going to work on one Thursday morning and thinking to yourself, just one more day until Friday. But then somebody in the elevator says, Happy Friday. Then you check your phone quickly and discover today is actually Friday. So yes, Happy Friday, random stranger in the elevator. Happy Friday, indeed. Yep, switching and saving with Geico feels just like that. Get more with Geico. How do you feel when you switch to Geico and save on your car insurance? It's like going to work on one Thursday morning and thinking to yourself, just one more day until Friday. But then somebody in the elevator says, Happy Friday. Then you check your phone quickly and discover today is actually Friday. So yes, Happy Friday, random stranger in the elevator. Happy Friday, indeed. Yep, switching and saving with Geico feels just like that. Get more with Geico. Wherever you are, we are. And we are at TN Fan Talk. Would you like to be on the show? We'd love to have you. Find our link tree in the show description. No experience or equipment is needed. Now. Back to Tennessee Fan Talk. Here's Bird and the Duke. <laughs> After the much later in the show break last week, we talked about what craziness could happen. And other than Kentucky, we all got what we wished for as Tennessee fans. And the craziness might not be over. Texas for now, in the clear for first place in their inaugural SEC uh, cupcake season, unless they lose to AM, and it's possible. That, and with uh, Georgia and Tennessee, both of them winning as they should, puts three, if the Texas loses to AT, uh, A&M, that puts three at the top. And then you get all kinds of craziness. Georgia over uh, Tennessee in head-to-head. Georgia over Texas in head-to-head. Texas with a horrible schedule compared to Tennessee. 
I have mixed opinions for an SEC championship appearance. I would like to go. It's been a while since we've won it, right? So I'd love to go to an SEC championship game, possibly win it. But I don't want to play Georgia nor Texas just yet. I would love to see them maybe get into uh, the playoffs with us not in an SEC championship. See them get in the playoffs, maybe get beat by someone. Texas, we we still have already said it. Not much of a, of a schedule to show us what they possibly could or could not be. I could go on and on about the CFP and the strength of schedule or lack thereof, quality wins, but I'm not going to do that till the end of regular season. So that could be next week's show, maybe the week after. Tons out there. Uh, ESPN put Tennessee in at number eight. Uh, I say ESPN, the college football playoffs uh, on ESPN as I'm recording tonight. We are a little late on this due to travel and, you know, having lives outside. We can't move on or can't finish the show, rather, without talking about this week's game. And wow. While in the past couple years, it wasn't much to talk about. In the words of Duke, uh, Tennessee could be all of Tennessee and just, you know, a Tennessee thing of, of losing to Vandy. It's just something that they would do. But again, his battered ball syndrome kicking in. Vandy and Tennessee has had 117 meetings. Tennessee leads that with 80 wins. Holds the last five in a row. Tennessee's last losses, losses, which were in a row, 2016 through 2018, two of which occurred in Nashville. Vandy looking to pull a huge upset at home this week. I personally believe Tennessee's defensive front is great against the run game, right? And Pavia, uh, we should stop him. Is he capable of throwing? Yes. Have our corners been good? Yes. Tennessee only opening favored by 11. That's got to be due to the offensive woes against quality opponents. And we're actually looking at Vandy against a quality opponent this year. They also put a total in the game of 48 and a half. I think Vegas may have the correct total. But I expect Tennessee to kind of beat that 11 point. Had a little chat with the Duke before coming to record this and just to get his picks. And don't want to really go through anything major, right? Uh, We have a couple games in this in-state rivalry week uh, starting Friday, Black Friday. There we got the Egg Bowl, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss. Poor Mississippi State looking like the Vandy of old. And Georgia Tech, Georgia. Saturday's games, of course, Louisville and Kentucky. Who cares? I gave him, I said, these are the four games I want. They did not include any of the Friday games, nor did they include uh, half of the Saturday games. I said, give me South Carolina Clemson, just because Clemson is on that uh, edge there of the of the uh, playoffs. So, He picked Clemson for the win. I'm South Carolina. And, of course, Iron Bowl, even though it doesn't really matter. You still got to look at the Iron Bowl. It's always a big game. We both pick Alabama for that. Texas and Texas A&M. The Duke picks A&M. I just don't know. It is, uh, of course, looks like it is going to be at Kyle Field, College Station hosting Texas, they very well could do it. They're as as upsetting as last week was for them. They very, very well could do it. The Duke thinks that Florida is just going to drag Florida State. I agree. And now on to Tennessee, Vanderbilt. Both of us, Tennessee, I've got it 34-14. Again, me, uh, Tennessee, uh, of course, meeting that 48, but definitely beating them by more than... 11. Absolutely crazy around SEC, around 
NCAA as a whole. Colorado going down last week. Everything just a huge, huge unknowing craziness in November. And who thought that this was not this was going to kind of make it a equal playing and the and the playoffs were going to level things. It's crazy. Appreciate you listening to this <laughs> very short episode, Tennessee Fan Talk. It's about the time we go on break. Instead, we're going to end it out. Go balls. You've been listening to Tennessee Fan Talk. <laughs> It's where the orange and white come to life. If it has anything to do with the Vols, we're talking about it. Thanks so much for listening to the show. We hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But wherever you are, we are. And we are at TN Fan Talk. Would you like to be on the show? We'd love to have you. Find our link tree in the show description. No experience or equipment is needed. Keep bleeding orange. And see you next time on Tennessee Fan Talk. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. If you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. Choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. How do you feel when you switch to Geico and save on your car insurance? It's like going to work on one Thursday morning and thinking to yourself, just one more day until Friday. But then somebody in the elevator says, Happy Friday! Then you check your phone quickly and discover today is actually Friday. So yes, Happy Friday, random stranger in the elevator. Happy Friday indeed. Yep, switching and saving with GEICO feels just like that. Get more with GEICO.